Hi everyone, it's Andrew from Roblox. This video is for programmers who are new to Roblox and want to start scripting. It isn't a Luau tutorial and instead addresses maybe the most fundamental concern when getting started with the language. How do I get my code to run? Because Roblox experiences are multiplayer by default, scripts need the ability to run on the server, the client, or both. Roblox addresses this need through script locations, the many, and I mean many, places you can store scripts within your experience. Let's jump right into Studio. Everything's easier with examples. This first script is the most basic one you can write in any programming language. Yes, it's the venerable Hello World. But even Hello World is enough to demonstrate the complexity around script locations. Here, our Hello World script lives in server script service, which is the best place to store scripts that you want to run on the server. We hit play, and there's the expected output. So if we want to run the same script on the client, surely we just copy it over to a client location, such as starter player scripts, and there's no output. It doesn't run. What's going on here? Well, we can get some hints if we dig into the player's service. When a player connects to a Roblox experience, they download everything they need to run it. Here we can see the Hello World script was copied over to the player, just didn't run. Why not? Well, the default standard script type in Roblox denotes a server script. For the starter locations on the client, we want what's known as a local script. Instead of copying the script over, let's create a local script named Hello Player. In fact, while we're here, let's create another one named Hello Character in starter character scripts. I'm also going to move the original back to server script service and change its print statement. Now we're getting somewhere, and we've also learned something about replication and execution order. The first script, Hello Server, ran when the server started. Hello Player ran when the client finished loading everything from the server, and Hello Character ran last after my character spawned into the experience. You can see server or client on each line. They're even color-coded. In fact, the scripts and starter character scripts run each time a character spawns, which we can verify by, well, dying. So we can use scripts in server script service and local scripts in the starter locations on the client. So far, so simple. But of course there's more, there's always more. Consider this attractive wooden cube in the workspace. I've attached a script and a local script to it, and only the script runs. By default, scripts only run when parented to certain containers. Similarly, local scripts only run when parented to the following containers. But if you open Studio and look for these locations, you won't see some of them. Instead, you might see starter GUI, starter pack, starter character scripts, and starter player scripts, which get copied over when the experience starts. See here how the scripts I created in those containers are visible within the workspace and players containers at runtime. Speaking of runtime, what about objects that you want to create while an experience runs rather than placing them ahead of time in Studio? You likely want to use server scripts to create these, so server storage is a great option. For objects that the client needs access to, such as UI instances or visual effects, you might prefer replicated storage. If you store scripts in replicated storage, though, attached to an object or otherwise, you have to be careful. By default, neither local scripts nor scripts run from this location, but scripts can run if you change the run context property. Yes, up until this point, we've only covered the default run context value, which is legacy. If we change this value to client or server, we can make scripts run from an even wider variety of locations. Being explicit about how your scripts should run also makes large projects easier to maintain, so we recommend giving all scripts a non-default run context. Because you can get scripts with a non-default run context to run from such a huge variety of locations, let's proceed directly to recommendations. Scripts with a run context of server can run from replicated storage, but server script service and the workspace are still the best places for them. Scripts with a run context of client execute immediately on the client, similar to local scripts in starter player scripts. Replicated storage is usually the best place for these. Local scripts don't even have a run context. Use these in the starter containers. Due to how the contents of these containers get copied, the starter containers don't play nicely with scripts that have a run context of client. Next, let's talk about replicated first. This service does what it says on the tin. It gets downloaded to the client before anything else. This makes it an excellent candidate for loading screens, welcome tutorials, and other objects that need to be available ASAP. You can use local scripts or scripts with a run context of client from this location. Both work just fine. The big key with Replicated First is to only store the absolute minimum number of objects that your scripts need, loading screen assets, for example. If you store everything here, it's no faster than Replicated Storage, but if you don't store enough here, and the scripts in Replicated First have to wait around for objects from other services, it defeats the purpose of using Replicated First. 
If you want to reuse code between scripts in Roblox, you use what are called module scripts. These are scripts that return exactly one value, which is usually a table, a function, or a table of functions. Module scripts don't run by themselves. Instead, you add them to other scripts and they run within those. You can store module scripts anywhere you store scripts, but if you want to share code between the client and the server, put them in replicated storage. Replicated storage is also a great option for sharing code between client scripts. If you want to share code between server scripts, server script service and server storage are both great locations. This is a classic module script. It begins by defining an empty table, adds a function to it, and then returns the table. This way you can add functions to it over time and you get a very natural, very explicit syntax when you call the function in another script, like so. Incidentally, this script also showcases the most common pattern of Roblox development. Get services, require module scripts, add local functions, and add the events that trigger those functions. We've covered a lot so far, but there's one more essential concept to touch on. We have all these locations for client scripts and server scripts, but what if they need to communicate? What if you want a script on the client to trigger a script on the server, or vice versa? In a farming experience, for example, you can't just take the client's word for it that they picked a cabbage. I'm having trouble imagining unintentionally picking a cabbage, but still. Instead, the client needs to notify the server of the action, and the server can determine A, whether the cabbage is even available to pick, and B, whether the player is allowed to pick it. To perform this check, you create what's called a remote event and then trigger it from within a client script. Because they enable communication between the client and the server, remote events almost always live in replicated storage. To review, let's look at this laser tag template from Roblox Studio, created by our very own Minty. If we filter for only scripts and remote events, you can see that the vast majority of the code is stored as reusable module scripts in replicated storage and server script service. The scripts in replicated storage have a run context of client. Server scripts are in server script service, and a local script sets up each blaster in the player's starter pack. It's a great example of a well-organized project, but it's certainly not the only way to organize a project. There's a ton of nuance to how scripts run in Roblox, far too much to cover in a quick video. For more information on what runs where and why, including details on module scripts, the run context property events, best practices, common patterns, and security, check out the scripting documentation at create.roblox.com. And thanks for watching.